Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today is Friday and y'all know it's time to get revenge. But today we are not getting petty revenge. No, 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 my friends. We are getting professional revenge. These are stories from the Pro Revenge Reddit page, subreddit, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I'm not a professional, even though I pretend to be. Anyway, this is professional revenge and I hope you're ready. If you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first pro revenge story. This says lunch thieves just dessert. Years ago, I had a lunch thief. Nothing worse than a lunch thief. About the 12th time complaining to HR about people stealing my lunch, mandatory reporting every third or fourth instance, I was seething that not a damn thing was being done and I still had to go buy something to eat. I was bitching to my doctor at the yearly checkup and he got a smile saying, are you constipated then? I was dumb and said, no, why? He wrote me a prescription for some holy holy hell laxative with instructions to mix it in with your meal for maximum effect. At which point I knew the plan. Delicious. Or is it? I wish I could say that they shat their pants, but no, they ate my sandwich with special avocado sauce. About an hour after lunch, I went to AR, HR and reported two things. One, my lunch was stolen again, and two, my medication was stolen. HR, so you got hit by the lunch thief again and your medicine was in the bag? Me, yes, I have had some digestive problems and my doctor prescribed a powerful laxative and advised me to mix it in with my midday meal. HR going white. You what? Me smiling, I mixed in a prescription grade laxative with my food per my doctor's orders. Well, being that stealing prescribed medication is a criminal offense, the police were called and found the lead man from a department over absolutely shitting his brains out. He was furious and accused me of poisoning his food. I asked, at which point did you get the idea that food was for you? Continued, furthermore, now I no longer have my medication. I was prescribed for my condition. It was about this time he knew he effed up and shut his mouth until he got a lawyer or so I'm told. One of my buddies from back in high school took his position. I can make and eat my hokies and have no clue where the lunch thief went after his fines and community service. So not only did he shit his pants, but then he tried to tell you you were poisoning your own lunch that he helped himself to. Well, that's freaking interesting. Oh, I'm so glad it was a prescription because now he got in double trouble. Oh, that was professional. Then not only professional, that was medical revenge. <laughs> Lovely, love it. Let's get on to our next story. Boss from hell gets what she deserves. Mm, I love a boss that gets what they deserve. I, 30s female, have been a people pleaser to a fault my whole life. I have been working in marketing for 10 plus years. Over the years, I've had my fair share of bosses who were good, average, and some who sucked. There is one in particular that stood out as awful. This story is from about five plus years ago. Pamela, 40s, not real name, was the VP of marketing and sales for a mid-sized retailer. She started at the company a few years after I did, and if rumors were true, she was the fourth pick for the position and was simply hired to the company could appease shareholders. I was a manager under her and my whole job was to make sure the website and stores had their products merchandised properly, received all their monthly sales materials, managed advertising, set up and managed the department's budget, PM'd all department projects and operations, created reporting to reflect sales, managed presentations slash, slash creative briefs for future products, projects, etc. I swear the more boring a job is that someone has, the more they want to talk about it. I, do we need to know any of this information? <laughs> In short, I did her work and all the administrative grunt work to keep the department afloat. I managed all this because I had access to her email and many times sent emails on her behalf to keep the department functioning. Pamela spent most of her time showing up after 10 a.m., taking business lunches and planning company parties. Don't even know why we did those, but I planned those too. I consistently questioned why she spent so much of our budget on these events when we didn't have the budget resources for any of it. Pamela told me to take from future months budgets to pay for the current months overspending. Honey, you do know that catches up, right? <laughs> 
So at the start of every month, I had an original budget and by the end of the month, I had to turn in an edited budget edited under Pamela's direction that made it look like Pamela's spending was under control. This is important for later. Finally, some pertinent information. I definitely made mistakes here and there being in charge of so many tasks and constantly found myself working 12 hours days, split between being in the office and working after my kid went to bed. Weekend work was also done before my family woke up and after they went to bed. Honey, I hope you are clocked in for all that or that's illegal on their part. During Pamela's first major holiday season, sales were shit. Pamela kept changing her mind on the visuals for the stores, kept bringing on new advertising and PR agencies to bring in sales. All these agencies consisted of were her personal friends and ignored our buying slash merchandise team's planned promotions for her own better ones. At this time, I had been dealing with an ongoing infection that turned to sepsis and was hospitalized. The doctors and my husband said it was due to the stress of work and that I needed to take a break. As I recovered, I realized how much I was hurting myself, my family, and even the company I worked for. Eventually, my old habits got to me and I got on my phone and checked mine and boss's emails. What I found made my blood boil. What was it? First, I got a lovely bouquet of flowers from upper management wishing me well, and I knew that Pamela organized the delivery. She sent me her favorite flowers. I went to inbox, I went to her inbox to put the receipt in the correct folder to send to accounting when I got back. At the top of her inbox from the past three days were emails clearly not related to business. What I found in her emails was Pamela emailing her personal friends, griping on how I just can't just shake off sepsis and get back to work. Sure, just shake off that life-threatening infection and get back to work. She also complained that she couldn't find any of my notes, spreadsheets, or documents for any of the work she was technically in charge of. They were on our shared drive, labeled very clearly. Finally, I found an email where she sent a friend from a previous company asking for advice on how to bring in sales and save her job. In this long thread, this old colleague asked if there was anyone managing most of my work, and of course, Pamela said I was. This colleague explained that clearly it was my mismanagement that was causing issues and that I could be blamed if sales didn't pull through by the end of the season. Pamela mentioned that I was in the hospital and repeated comments from her other email thread. This person said that she couldn't outright fire me because it could seem like retaliation because I needed to take emergency medical leave. But if Pamela could prove I was stealing from the company or misusing company resources, then she would have grounds to have me fired and use me as a scapegoat. Isn't that interesting? Upon my return, Pamela called me into her office and said she was worried I was taking on too much and wanted to take work off my plate. She announced she was taking manage she was managing the department budget she was taking managing oh my god she announced she was taking managing the department budget off my plate she asked me to only drop a small stack of invoices to accounting. Additionally, Pamela told me under no circumstances was I allowed to talk to accounting about anything regarding budgets. Also, if I had any concerns about the department or workload, I wasn't allowed to go to HR. I had to discuss it directly with Pamela. Oh yeah, I could see where this was going. So she's a dumb bitch, she's a lazy bitch, she's not good at her job and she's fucking stupid. What a great combination for a manager. Unfortunately for Pamela, I had built a rapport with Lois, 50s, not real name, who was our main accountant. Lois always said that she would do everything in her power to help me should I ask. Knowing this, I grabbed the stack of invoices off Pamela's desk to give to accounting. I also added the email threads I read while I was in the hospital and the current unedited budget that Pamela hadn't touched yet for the month. I also found in my filing cabinet the hard copies of old budgets with Pamela's handwriting on what numbers to change to balance our budget. Finally, I added an email from our first round of budget adjustments, whereas Pamela subtly threatened to put someone else in my job if I couldn't do what she asked. 
So I walked and dropped off the invoices to accounting when I bumped into Lois. She brought up invoices and I sternly looked at her and said, Pamela is the only one in our department that Lois is allowed to talk to about our budget and invoices. Lois saw the suspiciously thick file folder on her desk, gave a firm nod and lovingly kicked me out of her office. Within a week, Pamela was fired. From what I understand, she had been continually job hopping for the past few years. The CEO and HR brought me in to personally apologize for everything I went through and gave me a paid one week vacation to take at my discretion. Given other issues with this business, I left after another year, which brings me to today. I am once again, a manager for sales and marketing. I have a wonderful boss, Mike 40s male, who trusts my business decisions and backs me up on practically everything. We are hiring my team for me to solely manage and direct. Today, I looked through the applicants and found Pamela's resume sitting among dozens of others. I stared at her name, wondering how many other people share her name. Upon review, yep, it's her. She definitely fell down the corporate ladder with VP of our old company being the highest title she earned. And to no surprise, she embellished her achievements, claiming the work I managed as her own and claimed she generated an 87% sales growth during the holiday season at our previous company. As a people pleaser, pleaser who firmly believes in giving everyone a chance, it has never been so satisfying to click disqualified. <laughs> Edit. To those suggesting I interview her to see her reaction, I would have loved to see her face as she walked in, but I felt it would have risked my boss's trust in my decision-making ability. Maybe I'll send a personally written rejection email. Okay, a little long-winded, but Pamela definitely got what she deserved. That was 100% professional revenge in the purest sense of the form. <laughs> I would like to know what you think about that one in the comments and let's get on to our next story. This is called Some Like It Hot. Reading a recent stolen food PR reminded me I too have a similar life experience to share, true story. I had taken an R&D internship for a food company over the summer in Keokuk, the armpit of Iowa for those unfamiliar. For housing accommodations, the company had set me up in the local college dorm that was previously a retirement home. So it basically had individual rooms and bathroom, but one large commercial kitchen. It was summer and the school didn't have a summer program, but allowed two fall students to move in at the beginning of the summer. One was rarely there, but the other was constantly in the building and oftentimes had multiple friends over. Given the kitchen setup, we all start our, sort our food there and it, it's a pretty no brainer you shouldn't take from others, but immediately I had various food items going missing or being consumed regularly. Sodas, empty boxes of cereal put back on the shelf, etc. There's nothing worse than a roommate that eats your freaking food. I remember one time me and my husband were at a summer session and it was like two days before the end of the session. That's only two weeks long. And I went to go make like toast or something. And I grabbed our like, we had like a container of like whipped butter in the fridge and there was no more butter in it, but there was a note saying, sorry, I ate all your butter. And that was being refrigerated. Fucking roommates are the worst. <laughs> I initially posted a sign on the fridge to not eat others food and also confronted both about having food go missing after the sign was up, but it didn't stop whomever was stealing my food, particularly when I'd head out of town for weekends. After complaining about the situation to my manager during my job, they helped formulate the perfect pro revenge. Okay, I'm ready. Given I was doing R&D work on food products, I was responsible for getting various ingredient samples to use for new recipes. My manager suggested I get some capsaicin extracts for my research, even though we weren't doing anything in the realm for that flavor profile. Well, I found a company that had various Scoville unit extracts and I asked for a variety to see what worked best for our applications. Well, they did they deliver with some small two ounce bottles of 50K, 100K and 250K Scoville extracts. I am not a person who enjoys spicy food, so I don't know exactly how spicy that is, but 250K anything sounds spicy as hell to me. I ended up putting the 250K in a travel size spray bottle mixed with some water to help as a carrier and wearing gloves and a mask borrowed from work, doctored the common food items being stolen with a liberal spraying of my mixture, mainly cereal, chips, crackers, jug of milk, 
and the lip or top of a few coat soda cans. For the snacks, I actually put some into a separate bag and left them open to dry before mixing back into the original packaging. So like you went far. <laughs> I did this in a different dorm room in my wing so I know well enough how potent this can be in enclosed spaces. I did this right before another trip out of town and when I returned, I found some of the chips and cereal and milk was missing plus two of the three cans of sodas I had doctored. I never got to see the result and no one ever said anything, but none of my food went missing for the remainder month of my stay. I hope the experience was enlightening for them and they still remember the time they played with fire. <laughs> Yo, I love when a boss or like in the first story when a doctor's like, you wanna get them back? I got you, boo. <laughs> Yo, there's nothing worse than a roommate that steals your freaking food. Oh, so glad those days are behind me. That was delicious. That was pro revenge. I'm delighted. <laughs> Let's get on to the next story. When I wrote my dad's obituary, I didn't mention my mom and exposed her years of abuse and neglect. Originally posted in Petty Revenge, but it was removed, so I'm guessing it's more appropriate for here. My dad died December 1st, 2022. He briefly lived with me before his passing after a long stint of being chronically ill for the past 15 plus years. As his health declined, he relied more on my mom for things. Prior to this, she was never a great person and fully took advantage of his disability and mobility issues as he declined. For years, she claimed to be separated and divorced, talked to other men on the internet. She made claims many times she was going to move away and make marry someone else. In addition, she took advantage of him financially. We tried every legal avenue we could find to have her kicked out, arrested, or forced her out, but those attempts were met with responses that it was a civil matter and there was nothing that could be done. He made me durable uh, POA and added me to all his accounts. This is a small portion of her abuse, but I promise her actions were no less than neglectful and exploitive. I tried for years to get my dad to move in with me, but he wasn't leaving the house he worked so hard to pay for. I brought him home on hospice the day after Thanksgiving and made sure his final days were the best they could be. After meeting with the funeral home to carry out his final wishes, I was, I was told they required consent from my mother to allow me to cremate him. It was no surprise she initially told me no and only agreed after I allowed her to keep the social security survivor benefits which would have been hers anyway rolly eye face I wrote his obituary and left her out of it there was not a single word or mention he'd ever been married or had a spouse I didn't feel she deserved to be recognized or viewed as a grieving widow when she spent their marriage as a shitty spouse and person she lost her mind and there were many questions from my friends and family alike I spent years in therapy working through maternal narcissistic abuse and believed she didn't want me to talk about it then she shouldn't have done it when people asked about it I was honest about the years of abuse my father and I endured from her I've completely ruin the public image and victim complex she spent years creating. I might be the villain and an a-hole in this scenario, but I'd do it again in a heartbeat. That is the least of what she deserved. The least of what she deserved. Okay, that is all the pro revenge stories I have for you today. I would like to know in the comments which one was your favorite. Don't forget, we have a little playlist of petty revenge stories up here that you could binge whenever you like. Please don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.